the Spider-Verse lives! So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the long-awaited sequel to the highly popular and very well-received Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I honestly can't believe it took him five years to get this movie to us. This movie was delayed a lot. Like, I completely forgot about that. Hard to believe that movie was actually five years ago. That just... That just seems totally insane to me. But what is this movie about? Why did we need to wait five years just to see this movie? There's this super secret organization of spider people led by Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. And of course, when Spider-Woman, aka Spider-Gwen, brings Miles to join them, they really don't like him for some reason. There's also a new villain in the mix called Spot, who's around to cause trouble. And we follow Miles on this big journey as he struggles with the trials and tribulations and learns what it means to truly be Spider-Man. There are only really a few words that come to mind when I think about Across the Spider-Verse. Amazing, spectacular, ultimate, superior. This movie is all of those things and then some. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was really great when it came out in 2018 and I think everybody kind of knew we were going to get a sequel but oh my god. I'll tell you guys right now they outdid themselves. They didn't need to go this hard for this movie but I'm kind of glad that they did. This movie feels so much bigger in terms of scope but what I really like about it is it takes a lot of the things from Into the Spider-Verse and expands on them as well. Like we get to see a lot more Spider-Gwen in this movie. I had no idea we were going to get this much spider gwen she was a cool side character in into the spider verse and in that movie they kind of touched on her backstory a little bit but in this movie they just delve into it full sail so not only do we get to see a lot more with what's happening with her but we get to see a lot more of her earth and if you've ever read a spider gwen comic it pretty much looks like the spider gwen comic stuff like that is what i mean when i say this movie feels like it's expanding its world it also takes a lot of the lessons that miles learned from the first movie and expands on those even more because when we meet miles morales in this movie he's truly struggling with what it means to be spider-man if you've ever read a spider-man comic or you've seen a spider-man movie you know that the person behind the mask has a very huge struggle with their personal life versus their crime fighting life so we really get to see miles struggle with that dilemma in this movie Movie, and it was pretty neat and it's neat because that's spider-man that is just who spider-man is that is what he struggles with seeing those moments where miles is struggling it makes him feel like a very relatable human character it also opens the door to a very interesting family dynamic that i thought worked pretty well but when it comes to spider-man we all know how families work out they <laughs> <laughs> usually end up with a dead relative or two. And let me just say, Miles Morales, I, I'm not gonna lie guys, I did not used to be a Miles Morales fan. I was one of those guys that thought he was just a cheap knockoff race swath of Peter Parker. I mean, literally, that's what I used to think about him. But I think Into the Spider-Verse as well as this movie have proven once and for all that Miles Morales is his own character. He may have similar things that tie him to Peter Parker, and trust me, this movie takes every ample opportunity to make fun of that. But overall, he feels like his own character. I guess I better talk about the Spider Society and what's going on with them, because from the trailer, to me, it kind of looked like they were going after Miles simply because he has two parents that are alive. I'll say without going too deep into spoilers, that's kind of what's going on, but that's not what's going on. A lot more to it than that. But this Spider Society, lit by Spider Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, let me just say, they are the assholes. They are the villains of this movie. And Miguel O'Hara is voiced awesomely by Oscar Isaac. He does a really great job. This guy's vengeful, he's brutal, and he's got a really big chip on his shoulder. You know, people make fun of Tobey Maguire for being emo in Spider-Man 3. I think, I think Miguel O'Hara is a hundred times more emo in this movie than Peter Parker was in that movie. But all of these Spider-Man being Spider-Man, there are a reason why they are being kind of dickish towards Miles. And the movie explains it perfectly. You understand where Miles is coming from, and you understand where Spider-Man 2099 and the rest of the Spider Society are coming from but it's just the way they're going about things they're i'm not lying they're they're dicks they're straight up dicks and the spot you could argue that he is the villain of the movie but me personally i still think miguel o'hara and the spider society are the villains of this movie the best way i can describe the spot is he's a villain that is going to be a problem down the line. They set him up in this movie because he's going to have a very huge role in Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is the movie that comes after this one. To me, the spot has always been a really big jokey type character, so the fact that they're setting up to be a really big player is kind of cool. I like it when comic book movies take C or D list villains and kind of give them something bigger and grander to do. When he's using his powers and sending Miles through portals and doing crazy shit, it's pretty visually cool. The animation, in this movie is just beautiful. 
that's the best word I can just use to describe it. It's just beautiful. And I know their goal from the beginning was to get these movies to feel like comic books. Well, they succeeded. There's just a lot of things you could do with animation that you just can't do in real life. So the fights in this movie feel faster, they feel more brutal, and when the hits come, damn, they feel like they hurt. It probably would have been very easy for this movie to rely on references and Easter eggs alone just to hold up the plot, but it doesn't. All of the Easter eggs and references are just eye candy for people like me who love Spider-Man. This is just a really good Spider-Man movie centered around the concept of the multiverse. So for anyone that's going to see this movie, if you're worried about them using the multiverse as a crutch to hold the movie up, they don't. Any references they do make, they leave it there just long enough for the audience to go, oh, that's cool, and then they move on. As a Spider-Man movie, I'm gonna have to put this movie in my top three Spider-Man movies. There's just, there's just no way that I can't. I was literally sitting at my desk when I got home just trying to think of things that I did not like about this movie. I couldn't find a single one. This is... This movie's perfect. It's the most perfect movie I've seen in 2023. It's flawless. And I'll tell you guys right now, if we get to the end of this year, I would not be shocked if this was number one on the list. I... I can't find anything wrong with this movie. In the end, guys, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is just an absolute triumph. To kind of put it into perspective a little bit, this movie has made $200 million in its opening weekend. That is insane. This movie's runtime is like two hours in like 20 minutes. I'll tell you right now, if part two, Beyond the Spider-Verse, had started right after this movie, I would have sat there for another two hours and 20 minutes. That's how much I loved this movie. I cannot wait for Beyond the Spider-Verse next year. And with that little notion right there, I'll tell you guys right now, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in all its glory is a gift from the gods. Okay, so if you guys are watching this and it seems like I'm just ranting and rambling a little bit, that's because I'm trying out a new video format. Uh, instead of just writing everything and then talking about it, you know, writing a script, I'm just, I'm writing certain parts that are scripted and then there are things where I'm just going on a complete and total rant. So if this video seemed a little less organized than all my other videos, I do apologize. I'm trying out new and different things just because I need to start getting videos up quicker as opposed to just coming home and putting videos off for three or four days just because I'm tired and I don't want to write scripts for two hours. Literally, that's that's what's going on. So I'm trying to nip that problem in the butt. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I know it's been about a month. It has been a whole month since I uploaded a video to this channel. Last video I uploaded was my Super Mario Bros. review. I, I got a lot to catch up on. But anyway, that's all I got for this review. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And as always, I'm the Unbiased Movie Nerd. I'm saying peace, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace out, everybody.